welcome to Race Sensation. I am your host, Dan. And on today's episode, I am going to be looking at some new books from one of my favorite artists, Benjamin Mara. And uh, the first one is What We Mean by Yesterday, Volume 1. Now, Ben has been doing a series of online comics. I forget when exactly he started this. Maybe it'll say here. Um, and uh, it does not say uh, when, uh, when when this he first started doing this, but he was doing it online, and um, and so uh, he tells you in the beginning of this book that what you should do is only read one strip a day, and when, even when you're reading one, you're supposed to take a card. Where's where do I have a card? And I know I have some uh, cards around here, so let me grab one. Of this you're supposed to take a card this one's not big enough but you'll get the idea and so when you you read one strip and then when you're going to read the next one you cover the next page up so that you only get one a day because that's how it was meant to be read um now I, you know i was you know when he first started doing this i was like oh my god um you know whatever ben wants to do I'll, I will try and be there because I love Ben. Um, but uh, what was happening was he was doing these things and some of the, um, some of the things that are going on, it, it, follows, it starts off following this teacher. He's got a class that humiliates him, uh, class, students in his class that humiliate him. His name's uh, Barnes. And uh, he has to go to the teacher's lounge unwind by smoking cigarettes and uh, drinking booze and uh, you know um, as I was trying to follow this on the daily this 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 first series is not so bad because it seems to be like um, it kind of reminds me of the uh, I don't know if how many of you remember the movie falling down with a character Michael Douglas is uh, uh, somebody who worked uh, for a defense contracting company, you know, designing weapons for the military kind of thing, who loses his shit when he gets fired from his job and he's uh, separated from his wife, or maybe they're divorced already, I don't remember. And every little thing that every other person does is an insult to his uh, white male privilege kind of thing. Like, don't you know who I am? Don't you know what I am? <laughs> and... Uh, this kind of feels a little bit like that character and, and stuff. I, now, I haven't read anything about this because I, I kind of wanted to go into it um, without having read anything. But I did see a headline. Someone wrote uh, a headline like uh, Benjamin Morrow's Treatsy on um, Toxic Masculinity. Um, <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know about that. He tends to have, look at some of these kooky, drawings this guy's having road rage and he's going like <laughs> it's so cartoony um what am i trying to say here i mean the thing is the daily strip is not one of my favorite kind of things um like i said ed piscor was doing one um he just finished his switchblade shorties and i was enjoying that um this one of Ben's, like I said, this the first part's pretty straightforward, but then it starts getting more convoluted, or less, at least it felt like it to me. But you know, I was missing strips. I was reading it every day. Um, I uh, I subscribed to his Patreon, but I really did, wasn't reading it there. I was just, you know, you know, I would rather read it in a book collected together, and I'm not gonna read it a page today. I'm sorry, Ben, but that's just it. Um, and what do I make of this craziness? Um, <laughs> it, it, you can see here, here's, this is one day is him lighting a cigarette and starting to smoke it. Then the next day you're supposed to read about him opening a beer and drinking it. The next <laughs> day, if you're really doing these daily, is him finding the remote in his chair and turning on the TV and here he is falling asleep while he's watching The Office. <laughs> uh, so 
Um, <laughs> it, it's pretty wacky. This is a funny, funny idea. I, I just, I, I, uh, I'm trying to read through it. I haven't read the whole thing yet. Um, here he is. See, here's like, there is a convenience store clerk thing and falling down. It, it's being run. I think it was a Vietnamese guy or somebody uh, running this, running the thing that gives him a hard time. Here it's some, in Ben's book, it's some young, I don't know, millennial kind of guy, I guess. And he's buying this, the most enormous um, drink you can imagine, most enormous soda, and uh, what is this? A, a pack, of, yeah, a pack of, of cigarettes, and it's going to cost him twenty-seven dollars. <laughs> so he's uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go into this whole thing. And here's this mysterious kid he saw at school, and now he's seeing him in the Seven Eleven. Um, anyway, I'm not going to go into the whole thing. He keeps having run-ins with people, and, uh, and he's not really having as much satisfaction with his rage, because cause, uh, Michael Douglas in the movie gets the cops chasing him because he really is terrorizing people, and in here, he just makes, he's just making a fool of himself. But then he does have an epic barroom fight. Again, this is all moving so, so slowly. Um, you know, sometimes I complain about things where they have too, too much happens between the panels. And it's like, um, you know, if you don't have some parts in your comic where there is a minute by minute kind of thing, you don't really get the kind of emotional um, development that you kind of want, engagement that you need in a... Uh, in a story. Um, but here it goes, uh, <laughs> it goes way beyond that because, man, there, uh, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot of, there's a lot of time spent, um, no, not a lot going on, a lot of time spent on incredible amounts of small detail. But then there's this epic, bar fight that how long does this run uh he gets he gets uh he gets into a uh comes into the bar he gets into an argument with some guys and then here it is it starts on page 109 getting into the bar and then um it's only winding up with him leaving that bar that's 109 page 249 <laughs> and there's a there's an epic bar fight in here this guy our our uh, hero beats up uh, three guys and uh it's a bloody mess and he ends up with his face puffy and messed up and uh just wow um so uh i would say that um, as weird as it is to read this with all this crazy little detail, I, I still prefer it to, um, to reading as a daily. I, so I, I'm a, I do, uh, Ben Mars, um, Patreon. And so I could, I could read the, the, the newest episodes as they come out every day. Uh, he was on a delaying thing. I don't think, I'm not sure that it's on, um, Instagram anymore. The daily ones, or, or at least the newest ones aren't. Um, you know, I'm not sure, uh, but, um, but I don't go and read it. I, I'm probably going to just keep waiting till they get collected together. I do wish this is the first printing and I wish they had done it as a hardback because this is a big book and it, I really wish it felt, it really feels like it's one of those books where, um, after, if you read it too many times, the pages are going to start falling out. Um, and this is, of course, oh, did I mention, I didn't mention really, and maybe you didn't notice, but the style, he's come up with a style to do the daily strip that would still allow him to get this done and still do other work every day. And so it's much looser um, than his regular um, artwork. And, uh, 
you know, some of the panels are like, wow, <laughs> you really boiled that down. But um, I enjoy it. I, I think it's worth getting. It, this this fat little volume here was uh, 30 bucks. You can usually find it discounted somewhat. You know the kind of places to go. And, um, you know, it's 549 pages of, um, of a guy going over the edge. <laughs> so that's one thing, okay? The next thing, let me make sure this is centered correctly, is I also ordered Benjamin Morrow's Intermediary Mund. It is a uh, RPG. Um, I, I, you know, it's a they say it's a description of a campaign you ran. It, it, it basically seems to be a. Now I don't play um, role playing games. I don't play Dungeons and Dragons and stuff. I mean, I did play a little bit in the seventies, uh, but you know, I haven't since. But I always loved D and D art, and. Um, Especially the older stuff. Newer stuff is so slick. It's like most stuff. It's way too slick. I'm not as crazy about it anymore. But Benjamin Marr is drawing it old school. And it looks good. So, I, I, I'm not sure. I was trying to read it as though I was reading, you know, can I follow these character things and kind of tell what the story was? Uh, that's That's a little bit. But it doesn't really, you know, it's not really like reading a story or anything. But you can kind of follow along who they bump into along the way um he comes up with a character he came up with he's drawn this here are um i guess these are the stats that you need for playing this game um again i bought it to see more of uh ben's art because i really like his fantasy art stuff he's done some really beautiful paintings i really wish he would get a nice big art book of some of his his stuff besides the comics because boy he's got a lot of nice stuff um hopefully something like that will materialize soon i would like to say that that i i heard that that was maybe a possibility but lately i've been kind of dreaming that my wishes for books by people who i like uh have come true and i wake up and i i seriously thought of that about gary panter if you see my recent uh, video on talking about Gary Panter, I seriously had convinced myself that I saw something about a new book coming out. <laughs> and I, I kind of, as I was talking, I was going like, wait, do I remember hearing something that there was something like that? I don't think so, though. Anyway, so here's some of the artwork. Um, this little uh, booklet kind of thing, uh, there's a look at, the, look at that worm spraying that dissolving that guy's head. Um, this little book was twenty dollars, and I, this is this is a guy. Yes, he is letting him. He is having him poop onto that dish, and they're they um, they they cook it, and then they this guy powders it up, and then you can use it as a deadly in a deadly kind of poison gas spell or something. And here's a, here's a guy who, they, this uh, race of people who look, have little devil horns, they have things that grow in their bodies, these lumps of flesh that look like dog faces. Um, there's a cool scepter of pure chaos. Um, and there's a city built on a giant body. Um, Tall Rider in black armor. <laughs> Cave jelly. Making him do things. There's a giant uh, elder god kind of thing. Um, the four who survived. <laughs> uh, that kind of looks like... Who's the guy in uh, Star Trek The Trouble with Tribbles? It kinda, this guy, guy reminds me of that guy. Uh, this is a cool step tree with a little a village built uh, built within its roots. The 
massacre at the town hall. <laughs> There's the death of that guy we had seen earlier. Children, co <laughs> Children cover covered in vicious liquid, viscous, viscous liquid. Um, the forming of the lesser Voyager, those look like cross between tubers and hearts. Slam it together. There is a wacky looking monster. That's the... <laughs> so, um, so yeah. Uh, you know, this is, um, this is 60 pages of wacky, uh, I wouldn't say that wacky. They're fun. They're fun Ben Mara uh, role-playing game monsters to have adventures with. If you're into that, or if you're like me and you just like his uh, artwork, um, I thought it was good. Uh, I'm going to do another video about another artist who I like, who's I, I bought one of these types of things just for his artwork, only didn't turn out as well. Okay. And the third book I'm going to talk about is not really new, but in one of my other books uh, where I was talking about showing off some of Ben Mara's early stuff, um, someone asked me, well, if I've got ben, Ben's book, American Blood, and the things that came after that, that he made after that, I'm covered, right? But I didn't have my, I couldn't get hold of this, you know, to look and see if everything I had, because I have a lot of earlier stuff, um, if everything I had was in this book or not. Um, and it doesn't really say that in here. It doesn't say like, this is everything. Um, so this is a, a, a book that Fantagraphics put together um, because Fantagraphics didn't publish uh, Ben's earlier stuff. Uh, I think this and, uh, and the one man wore on his hair uh, the, are the first things that uh, Fantagraphics did uh, with Ben, and um, yeah, so so this all this stuff is uh, you know here this is his gangster rap posse comics are in here, and um, that's a lot of fun. It's ultra violent. It's like. Uh, they're trying to bring to life the crazy, some of the crazier rap songs about shootouts and stuff. And and uh, it really, it's like all his earlier stuff where it's just over the top wildness. And then they go into this st studio and cut an album. <laughs> um, so that's in here. Um, there we go. Then we've got, uh, Lincoln, Washington, free man. And this is kind of like, um, uh, a black history. It's kind of like, um, Quentin Tarantino's Django, um, Unchained, where it's, uh, a guy goes back in history and he's such a Superman he can right all the wrongs that have, you know, he can take on the the slavers and he can take on the uh, the Ku Klux Klan. And it's fun. It, again, it's wild. It's over the top. The dialogue is kind of creaky. Uh, at the same time, it's a lot of fun. The action is pretty fun. I mean, there you he uh, takes a gun butt and and smashes the the clan's member's head right off his body. He tears the tears an arm off and then starts beating the other clansmen with it. Um, just a, just pretty. And he, here's uh, <laughs> he, Ben's earlier books all had weird uh, author thing, things about the author. This is one of the things he had. And Maureen Dodd is, uh, <laughs> this is just a fantastical, um, you know, Ma Maureen Dodd is, 
in reality is a columnist and this person's a columnist. I don't know that this even looks like her or I'm not even sure if the name, if Maureen Dodd is spelled the same way as this. Um, matter of fact, let, 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 <laughs> I, got my, I got my phone right here. Green Dodd, is it? It's probably Dowd. Actually, it kind of looks like her. Um, kind of looks like her a little bit. Uh, although, <laughs> I'm not sure if she'd appreciate being drawn in this kind of outfit. I couldn't really picture her. I, I'm really not that familiar with her. I just know her name. She's on the news once in a while as a talking head. Uh, but anyway, they imagine her as not only an investigative reporter at the level of like Woodward and Bernstein, but also she's got the action chops of a, a super secret spy kind of thing. So uh, again, more, just more, 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 more. <laughs> then Ripper and Friends, uh, let's see, there's another great, author pick of Ben. Um, and this is his funny animal comic. Uh, it's kind of going <laughs> down through uh, some of the genres. Um, this is okay. This reminds me of uh, somebody like Johnny Ryan where it's just uh, over the top. Um, you know, it, I, I say Johnny Ryan because I've I have some of his books to review too, so he's on my mind. But you know, it's just over the top, grotesque gags about uh, animals. <laughs> you know, here here they kill and eat these pigeons, and uh, there they poop all over sidewalks of a guy to get revenge on this guy. And then there's of course an evil dog catcher that they have to. The dogs have to go up against. So, uh, so that's in there. Um, there's Ben again. And then this was this one I really love. This is uh, uh, his uh, barbarian is space barbarians of the ultimate future dimensions. <laughs> uh, what is this? Uh, Zoran the Sword Lord. Is that how you say his name? Zor, Zor no, Zorion the Sword Lord. Sword Lord. Yeah, it's probably Zor, Zor, Zorion, I guess, the Sword Lord. Um, and uh, <laughs> the, I, I really like this. This is a lot. I'm, I, I'm going to say this over and over. It's just a lot of fun. And it's over the top. It's it it hits on all the cliches and tropes of the of this kind of stuff, but it does it in such an entertaining way. And uh, his art is so fun. So uh, <laughs> look at that monster. <laughs> um, and then. Uh, Oh, there's a little short thing. This one here, um, the Naked Heroes, I don't have that. And this is really short in here. Um, or is this a backup? No, this, this, these characters look familiar. This must be a backup in one of the other comics or something, because I do recognize this. But it's so short, I'm not sure. I don't know, I have too much stuff. Um, bla uh, Blades and Lasers. Is, is very similar except it's uh, you know has a has some a modern guy with the barbarian a, a contemporary looking guy with the barbarian and uh, it's just a lot of fun so so I think that this does have all the stuff that I had in all those comics I think it does collect it all together so in response to the, the person who wrote me uh, wrote a comment and this was about 10 months ago, maybe. 
<laughs> is if they have the, the things published after, you know, One Man War on Tear, if they have everything that was printed after that, and this, do they have it all? Well, except for illustrations, and, you know, I think he might have had some one-page comics and stuff in other places. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Um, but yes, this does collect it all together. Here's the thing, though. Um, I appreciate that they got all this stuff. Um, and this is uh, 238 pages. Um, I appreciate that they got it all in this book for $19.99. I mean, that's a great bargain. Except that, uh, quite frankly, I wish it had been printed at the original comic book size pages. And, um, you know, the fact that the entire book is in purple ink, um, uh, I don't know. It just makes it all seem samey. I really wish, I wish it was full size and I wish there was some variety in the colors of ink. But, you know, I'm really not sure how... I don't think his comics are expensive to find these older ones. I haven't looked to see, but I'm sure they're probably hard to find because I, I, I don't think he printed that many. I don't think that many were printed. Um, but anyway, maybe... Maybe Fantagraphics, I, you know, they don't even have, have One Man War on Tear. Uh, it, that's, that seemed like it got one printing and now it's been out of print for years. Um, so I don't know, I, does he not sell enough? Does he, I, I, I don't know, but I wish Fantagraphics would reissue this, maybe in a larger size. I wish War on Tear, One Man War on Tear would be reprinted. Um, and, uh, yeah, I wish all that. And I hope uh, another volume of What We Mean By Yesterday comes out again. So I hope that gives you an idea about what all this stuff is. And uh, let's see what Ben's got on his plate next. I can't wait to see. Oop, here we go.